Hello, let's talk about Kosovo, okay? Num uh, 2.1, causes of the conflict. Uh, number one, understand the key concepts and these things right here, the cause, significance, and the different perspectives that are going to be playing a large role in this conflict. Uh, and you also need to understand how nationalism is going to cause, uh, really lead to the outbreak of the First World War. Um, remember, when we talk about World War One, we talk about the four main causes, militarism, uh, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. Um, so looking at nationalism uh, specifically, that extreme pride in your country, uh, that's going to be incredibly prevalent in uh, the Balkan region, which is what we're talking about, uh, particularly within Albanian nationalism and then Serbian nationalism. And Kosovo is going to fall right in between Serbia and Albania. So uh, that's going to be causing a number of issues. So have that idea of nationalism in the back of your head as you are reading through this chapter and as you're listening to me uh, review this right now. Um, and then when it comes time to complete any d uh, DBQs over this section, um, really when talking about Kosovo uh, or Yugoslavia or the Balkans at all, make sure you mention nationalism because nationalism is going to be super duper important. Um, understand that this region is a ramshackle collection of nationalities. It is flipping diverse. Okay. Uh, you're going to have Christians, Orthodox, Muslims, and Jews. So you're going to have, uh, all of the major religions, um, the major Abrahamic religions, that is, in this same region. You're going to have ethnically diverse people. You're going to have Slovenes, Croats, uh, Bosnians, um, Serbs, Albanians, you name it. It's all going to be kind of thrown together in this one little area. So you got a bunch of different people um, with very different backgrounds all living together. That's going to be a recipe for disaster, um, a potential recipe for disaster, not disaster, not necessarily uh, it's inevitable, but it's very, very likely to have some problems and start boiling over. Uh, understand that around 750,000 Albanians lived within the Ottoman Empire. So this region, um, as you can see on the map right here, Bulgaria, Serbia, Albania, um, this at one point okay, was part of the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire is going to be crumbling uh, in the early 1900s at the end of World War One, officially crumble. Um, but there is a lot of Albanians who are going to be living within the Ottoman Empire, um, and they're going to make up a disproportionately large large number um, of soldiers within the Ottoman army. So they're very loyal to the Ottoman Empire, um, which is something that you don't really see in parts of the other um, European provinces that were occupied or controlled by the Ottomans. So that's going to be important. Um, then it's going to happen. You're going to have others that are going to, uh, such as Serbia and Romania, um, are going to get independence from the Ottoman Empire. Albania is going to remain Ottoman. Um, this is going to cause a number of different conflicts. Okay, um, The Albanians are fighting for their independence. So there is a history of Albania. Albanians fighting for independence um, from a group that is not going to be controlling or that is controlling them and they don't want to be doing that. Um, so they did make up a large percentage of the military, but they're ultimately going to decide that they want to be their own, um, their own nationalistic uh, kind of ambition. And that's going to be going on right here. So understand. There is a history of Albanians fighting for independence. Okay, then we're going to get into the Balkans War in 1912, 1913. Um, there's going to be a series of political upheavals and power politics, as you can talk about. Um, it's not a great power rivalry that we talk about when it comes up to starting World War I. Uh, this is going to be really, says the first inferno of the First World War. Um, this is going to be like the first kind of conflict that really is just going to bleed over into World War II, remember, or World War I, excuse me. Remember, World War I does start in Sarajevo, which is a Balkan city. Um, it's going to kind of split or bleed over, so to speak. So you understand right here the First Balkan War. Uh, you need to understand really what's going on here. Um, so it's going to be a series of breaking and splitting. Um, the sick man of Europe going up right here, which is the Ottoman Empire, because they were very weak at this time period. It was a really good time for countries that wanted their own independence. It's kind of the time to do it right now, because the Ottomans, they're pretty darn weak. Um, the Balkan allies are going to be quickly victorious, uh, and the Ottomans are going to be collapsing. Okay, They're going to lose their power in Europe, for the most part. They're going to control Turkey and still parts of it over there. Um, but they're not really going to have much power in Europe anymore. Serbia? is going to gain independence, and they're going to gain control of Albania, um, or they want to gain control of Albania, because Serbia is a landlocked country. Um, if you are a landlocked country, you kind of have a little bit of a problem because you don't have access to the sea, which is going to inhibit your ability to trade. It's also going to inhibit your ability to have a navy. When you have a navy, you can be a lot stronger. Uh, Serbia is trying to gain strength and power at this time. Um, it's not one of the big powerhouse countries in Europe, but it's certainly not the weakest country in Europe. They're kind of somewhere in between. If they can gain access to the sea, 
they're going to be more powerful country. Uh, this is something the Albanians obviously are not going to like because Albanians and Serbians are different. Um, religiously, they're going to be different. Albania is mostly Muslim. Serbia is going to be mostly Orthodox. Uh, they're going to have different languages or different ethnic or ethnicities, and it's just not something they're going to want. Uh, then we're going to get the Second Balkan War almost immediately. So Serbia, Greece, Romania are going to quarrel with Bulgaria um, over divisions of Macedonia. This is going to bleed over um, pretty much right into the start of World War I, uh, assassination in June 1914. Um, as I said right here, it's like the first phase of World War, uh, which is pretty much what I've been talking about this whole darn time. Um, but really, the crisis that begins in the Balkans in 1912 is going to continue in Europe uh, pretty much until the end of World War II. Uh, so this is going to spiral out of control very, very quickly if you understand anything about history, which at this point you do, uh, is going to get bad. Okay, this is kind of the spark in the powder keg, and it's not just a little bit of a fire. It's a big freaking inferno. Um it's bad, and it's going to bleed, bleed badly. Now, the Balkans is the First World War. Um, so at this time, many Serbs and other Slavs in the Balkans are being controlled by foreigners, okay? And at this time, Serbia is seen as their champion. So this is kind of the belief um, in the supremacy of Serbia within the Balkan region, okay? So if you look at this map right up here, uh, you're going to see Serbia. And Serbia is kind of the powerhouse uh, in the Balkan region. Um, and they're going to continue to believe this, and a lot of Serbs really think they are. Other countries are going to kind of look to Serbia as the one that can control what's going on in the region and the one that can kind of protect the Balkan states. Um, some are afraid after World War I ends that uh, the Italians are going to exercise their claims to the Dalm Dalmatian coast. Remember, um, the, re uh, the way the British got the Italians into the conflict was saying, we're going to give you the, uh, the Dalmatian coast, um, which is Balkan territory. So the Balkans are the Balkan countries are not happy by this. They're very afraid of the Italians. Uh, Serbia and Italy also could carve up the Austro-Hungarian empires in the Balkans and just take them for themselves. So again, Albanians, um, those that are not Serbian or not Italian, are very afraid of what might be happening. October 1918, Serbia is going to manage to occupy Kosovo, which is where this whole crisis goes from. Um, and many Serbs are going to regard this as their homeland due to a major battle between the Serbians um, and another group, which I can't remember the top of my head, in in Kosovo. Okay, so a lot of their ancestors died here. This is a major part of Serbian history. They're going to view that this, this as their land right through there. Um, and this is super, super, super freaking important. Okay, this is kind of why uh, Serbians, uh, oversimplification, but this is one of the main reasons why Serbians view by, or Kosovo as theirs. Okay, so make sure you are understanding that. So then we're going to get in between World War One and World War Two. Um, the Allies, France, Great Britain, United States, and Italy um, feel that they've got to give some kind of compensation to Serbia. Serbia did a very good job in World War One. Um, they really helped fight the Austro-Hungarians and the Turks, and they're like you know what, we really couldn't have done this without you, so we're going to give you something. So we're going to give them a kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, which is a horrible name, and it's very large. Um, it's going to be later changed to Yugoslavia, which is much better. It quite literally means the land of the South Slavs. Um, so we're going to get a nation born out of World War I. Um, this happens uh, across the country, or across Europe, really, um, and in parts of Africa as well. But uh, we're going to get Yugoslavia as a result of World War I because the British, French, Americans, and Italians felt that Serbia needed something. Serbia is going to be kind of the powerhouse of this new country. Um, they're going to be the largest ethnic group in the Balkans, so therefore they feel like they can get the uh, they have the ability to lead. They have the right to lead, and it's their duty to protect um, the region. They also feel that it was their ability in fighting in World War One that gave them the fact that they would even have the opportunity to gain independence in the region. Therefore, they're the ones who should dominate this federation. Um, others, particularly the Croats and Slovenes, are going to be saying, "Uh, uh, not going to be happening. Shouldn't be going like this." Um, Ultimately, this is going to lead to the breakup of Yugoslavia at the end of the century. Okay, so in the 1990s, when Yugoslavia goes bye-bye, uh, this is ultimately the reason to, uh, for that. Also, understand a little bit of the religious breakup. Balkans, um, we're talking right here, Croats and Slovenes are the predominantly Catholic countries within the region. The other ones are going to be um, Orthodox, because the Serbians are predominantly Orthodox. So you are going to have a bit of the Great Schism kind of uh, attitude going on right through here between the Croats, Slovenes, Catholic, and the um, Bosnians, or the Serbs, excuse me, who are Orthodox. Uh, so understand that right here. 
Yugoslavia, um, as a federation, had to constantly struggle with all of its neighbors. Uh, it's basically the underdog that keeps on managing to fight and somehow manages to stick together. Uh, they're just consistently fighting with other countries, uh, be it the Hungarians, the Romanians, the Bulgarians, uh, the Italians. They just manage to keep going. The uh, people of Kosovo are now considered ruled by the Serbs. However, they're much more interested in the uh, politics in Albania. Um, Albania is going to be invaded under Mussolini and the Italians, and that's going to be a big deal for the Kosovoans. Um, I believe that's what you call people from Kosovo. Uh, they're much more concerned with what's going on in Albania than they are in Serbia, even though they're technically under the authority of Serbia. Um, Albania is going to effectively become a puppet state under Italian influence, so it's technically its own, but basically whatever the Italians want is going to be happening in Albania, as you can see in this cartoon right here from Soviet Union. Um, we see the Italian boot, which looks like a snake about to eat the rabbit, the little tiny bunny rabbit that makes up Albania. Um, right through here in the Second World War, ethnic divisions within the region are going to erupt into a very, very bitter civil war. Um, we're going to have the leader in Croatia right here, uh, Pavlicek, Pavlic. Uh, who's going to take the opportunity to begin a campaign against non-Croatian minorities, uh, Serbs, Roma, Gypsies, Jews, and effectively he's committing a massive genocide. Um, so what Hitler's doing, he's kind of just doing it too, um, as it says right here, uh, brutal by even German standards, which if you're brutal by the standards of the Nazis, you're freaking brutal. Um, so understand there's a lot of bad stuff going on right through here. Um, there's going to be Yugoslav resistance. It's going to be in two different groups. We're going to have the Royalist um, and the Chetniks right here, uh, led by Milahovic, um, and the Partisans led by Joseph Broz Tito. Um, understanding this right here, there's going to be political difference among these two groups. Um, 1944, the Allies, so the Americans, the Soviets, and the British are going to switch their support um, from Milahovic. Uh, I think I'm saying that right, good enough, uh, to Tito. Okay, so they're going to switch support to Tito. Uh, and this is going to be kind of really large and super important. After the war, um, the partisans, so Tito is going to capture him right here, and he's going to be executed. Uh, Yugoslav partisans were incredibly effective resistance fighters, um, like the most successful resistance fighters of all in the entire war. Um, and it's basically the, region, the reason they're going to be getting control of their own country. Um, they're like the only ones that really liberated themselves. They weren't liberated by anyone else. They liberated themselves um, from occupation by the Nazis. Uh, result of ethnic tension is going to be the principal cause of suffering um, within the region and foreign invasion for a long, long time. Uh, understanding that uh, Italy is going to surrender in 1943. Thus, Albania is going to be free as well, um, meaning Kosovo is once again going to become a pawn for larger interests. Is it Serbian? Is it going to be Albanian? What's going on right here? Hoxha, right here, one of the toughest and most uncomfortable compromising of the communist strongmen in the 20th century, leader of Albania. Um, one of the toughest communist strongmen. So this is comparing him to Stalin and Mao and Castro and some other very tough um, communist leaders, even Tito. He's one that kind of even takes it a little bit farther, which is saying something um, because there was some tough competition at that time when it comes to strongmen, communist leaders. Questions, comments, put them down below. Let me know. Hope this helped. Good luck.